Hi guys, welcome back to the Humble Gamer channel. I am the Humble Gamer, and this is some more of my Steam Summer Festival, Steam Festival, Steam Fest, Summer Fest thing. Um, I haven't nailed down a name for it, obviously. And we are on the Stainmore route, which you can find on the Steam Supreme website, and there's a link to it down below. Now this route comes with an awful lot of stuff. I'll show you the route map first before we get into what I'm driving. We are, you, it runs all the way from Penrith, which is where we're starting. You can go down this route via Clifton Moor and others towards Kirkby Thor and Appleby and eventually on to, I believe that one eventually goes on to Kirkby Stephen. Yes. So that's basically the Settle and Carlisle line, or parts of the Settle and Carlisle line. And eventually it goes up to its easternmost point at Barnard Castle, which you'll know from the Tees Weirdale route. Uh, you can then also come across to places like Ravenston Dale and where we're going, T Bay, and then on to the Furness Railway, places like Grange Over Sands, Arnside, Oxenholm that sort of thing. It even includes a less scenified portion that is the Lakeside and Haverthwaite um, railway along with the rest of the route that used to link up to that. Um, we are driving an express from Penrith to T-Bay. The reason for that is because I wanted to try, uh, I haven't really driven much of this uh, Leander which is from the, I believe it's from the, but for me quite boringly, it's from the Settling Carlisle um, excursions. <laughs> Settling Carlisle Specials add-on, which is made by Dovetail Games, um, or at least was released via Dovetail Games through Steam. Um, I don't know exactly who it's who it's made by, but it also includes things like the Flying Scotsman and some of the Kings and stuff like that. But this route is good. It's a hundred mi There's over a hundred miles of it. All the details are on the Steam Sound Supreme website. It involves things such as Caledonian Works locomotives. Um, such as the LNER E14, the 240, which you will see in other videos, and on Sodor. Um, uh, you, no, you don't see Leander on Sodor. Um, but it's a big, big, it's a big um, collaborative effort. Uh, ben Yates is involved, and a lot of Steam Sound Supreme um, folk in general are involved. But we have an express to run. We, we're going to get there around about half past ten, and we are running through some of the most gorgeous scenery I've ever seen on a train sim route. Also some wonderful stock. A lot of this Stainmore stock is going to be used on my Sodor route. So, um, yeah, the Stainmore route itself comes with four... It comes with four new quote-unquote locomotives. Certainly new for me, and it comes with repaints of other locomotives. It comes with the LNER E14 240. It comes with the Ivert Flying Pig, which you've seen in previous videos in this series, um, the 260. It comes with the BR Standard 260 and a BR Standard 460. It also comes with specific repaints of um, uh, the Black 5 and the LMS 3F, which is from uh, the Black 5, I believe, is from the generic, I believe it's the generic Kuju train simulator Black 5. Um, so I'll just give us a bit more pace to come out of Penrith with. And uh, the LMS, the Fowler 3F is the one that comes with the TS Academy, I think. But please do go and double check the website for it. Um, it should be pointed out that the E14 you get with the Stainmore route is made by Caledonia Works, but you can get it only comes in LNER and BR liveries um, with the Stainmore route. However, you can get it in an extended livery, but you have to buy it as a standalone pack from Caledonia Works website. All of these links are in the description below. I highly recommend you check all of it out. I have driven nowhere near as much of this route as I would like. Um, but you know, some of the rolling stock is fascinating. Like, I genuinely, I'm going to let the train go because the, the train is Leander. You you know how Leander works. You know what that one looks like. But look at these wagons. Just look at them. That's a beautiful wagon. That. <laughs> Not very often I get excited about freight about freight wagons, but that is gorgeous. I love that. I, I just love that style. 
and it comes with tr coaches by Matrix Trains, I believe, which are the the LMS and LNER. Um, no, not LMS, just LNER. Gresley. Um, I think it is LMS, LNER, and Mark One stock in Blood and Custard and Maroon. So here we are. Coming out of anyway, we <laughs> coming out of Penrith um, station throat now. And there is huge operational scope on this, and I really hope at some point they will fully scenery the Haverthwaite, Lakeside and Haverthwaite section. I don't know where the scenery stops, but I was going to do the Let's Play along the Lakeside and Haverthwaite road, but there just wasn't enough scenery, and I wasn't comfortable showing you guys that. Because it A, doesn't, it A going to be really dull for you guys. Look at there's the repaint of the LMS 3F, which is from the Academy. Um, all included in the pack, the repaint. You have to have the original logo, but it's all included in the pack. Ah, I think I stopped in the station for a bit too long because they there's some serious backup there with the traffic. Two trains pretty much on top of each other. Um, it comes with a whole host of scenarios. Um, this route, it's really really good. But like I said, I really hope they re they do a patch to fully scenery that last little bit of the route um, because I'm well aware I don't have all necessary DLC for this but I think um, I think I'm missing one route and there were no milk, no milk bottles where I was looking so um, while I accept some responsibility for that it's not entirely my fault but the scenery on this route is genuinely quite gorgeous um, and it's just a pleasure to drive. Um, like I said, this is one of those things where it's it's just sort of showing you the basis of the route. And I could have taken you from Penrith down to uh, down to Kirkby Stephen, but you've seen bits of the Settler Carlisle line on the Settler and Carlisle line. So I thought there's no point in showing you that. So let's take you on a route that you haven't seen in Train Simulator before. This is relatively new, it came out this year. Um, at time of writing I think it came out about a month ago. Time of writing, time of recording, so for you guys about about two, two and a half months ago. And this is our first proper express run of this excuse me for slowing, of this sort of festival. Um, and I'm very excited to show you it because I'm not going to talk too much about the locomotive, it's Leander, it's a Jubilee, LMS Jubilee class. Um, William Stanley, Express Passenger, seen pretty much everywhere on the London, Midland and Scottish railway and regions, once they got into BR. You know, there's nothing, that, that's not the exciting thing, I didn't want to pick a loco. I could have picked a loco um, that they designed, but um, that came with the route. Uh, like I said, you've already seen the Flying Pig, you will see the E14. Um, you'll probably see it in this video anyway, what with traffic, etc. But you, but you will see it in in future videos. Like that I can guarantee you, and you'll see the standards as well. Um, but um, no, I thought it'd be best to take the because this route is gorgeous. Everything they've done for this route is gorgeous. So I thought best to take the um, uh, the for once. I thought I'd take the uh, focus off the locomotive and put it onto the surrounds and the scenery. We are now approaching the junction of the west for the West Coast Main Line. So this, incl this includes parts of West Coast Main Line over Shap, which I don't have, so I haven't seen it all. Um, it also includes, like I said, parts of the Settler Carlisle. It also includes parts of the old Furness Railway via Grange over Sands. It's very, very good. I've driven the route from um, I've driven the route from T Bay to Kent's Bank. Um, off camera, and my God, it's it's genuinely gorgeous. Genuinely, it's gorgeous. Um, uh, so far, there's not a single part of this route I don't like. So let's go adjust the. Oh, it's loading stuff in. It's also quite large, so for lower end PCs, this is going to be a struggle because it is quite large, but. So we're now joining the West Coast Main Line, as opposed to the Settle and Carlisle Line. So there's the 
there's the route. This route eventually becomes a second car line, line, and there is that is an E14. So you'll see it now in British Railways livery, the 240. Lovely little locomotives, and definitely has a place on Sodor. With a mixed train of Mark Ones and Mark two Mark Ones and a Gresley. Waiting for me to clear its track, which I have done on my LMS rail tour in 1963. Oh no, I think I said Penrith 1953. So yeah, you can get you can you can set it up in different time periods as well. This one, so I say set it up. That's not quite how it works. Yes, I know I'm losing steam, but we're just going to have to deal with it because we've got hills to climb. <laughs> The NMS had some nasty routes, they really, really did. Cutting through from the from the bottom right of England to the top left to, to get to Scotland via Glasgow. They really had some nasty, nasty routes. I believe that used to be a station, I don't know what it used to be, but I would guess Clifton Lowther. Since that's the junction we're going through right now. So yeah, I just want to show off the scenery of this route. The locomotive I wanted to be second I wanted the locomotive to be secondary in this video because this route is gorgeous. It's just it's just stunning. The detail and the size of it is amazing. All of this, by the way, for 30 quid. Unless you pre-ordered it, in which case you got it for about 25. Um, and it's and you get you do get all the stock included, all the uh, rolling stock, the carriers, the wagons, the scenic items, and there are a lot of scenic items. Expect some of them to turn up on Sodor as well. Um, Sodor's basically going through a big redesign scenery-wise, so <laughs> um, yeah, expect a lot of um, this sort of stuff to end up in it. Um, but it is, it's just. It's gorgeous. It's, I, I can't give it high enough praise. I really can't. It is genuinely a gorgeous route, and I hope you enjoy as we just sort of fly through it. Just trying to get above 40 mph, and I'm on a 1 in 125 grade. There's another NMS 3F runs past us with a tr with a wagon train, tanker train specifically. So yeah, we're still we're only about 14 miles from here to T Bay, but um, through gorgeous northwest English countryside. I mean, considering it's called the West Coast Mainland, we don't really see the coast much. Um, certainly not on this portion of the route, anyway. Through. There aren't any, there aren't actually many stations on this point. Let's see, we're going through Thurnaby Grange, Sweet Home. I don't think there's actually a stop. Shap Quarry, so we are going over Shap, which I've never seen before. Oh, Shap Summit Quarry Platform, so there's one, technically one station. And then, yeah, T Bay. <laughs> slowing at a, re at a relatively alarming rate. I had hoped I'd keep speed up a little bit a little bit better than this. But that's not a worry. This is kind of half of the course with LMS main lines. By the way, the limit's going down to 60. I'm not even touching 40, so I wouldn't worry about your speed limits. And the Coach G regular London, well, they're British Railways Maroon, um, LMS, XLMS Mark 1s. Fairly standard stuff. Like I said, I wanted the rolling stock to be secondary. One 124, it's got slightly steeper. There's a little stream through there. This is what I love about this particular route. 
and everything that Steam Sounds Supreme does. That's why I enjoy the Seven Valley Rights, why you're, I'm going to enjoy um, other, other of their routes that I am going to showcase. There's at least one other route of theirs that I'm going to showcase. Um, possibly two. Um, and it's the amount of detail they put into it. it, it you feel like they've really taken the time to put as much in the route as they can. Let's adjust the reverse a little bit, see if we can't get a little bit more traction. Would 50% help? Certainly keeping it at 33.2, so let's stay with 50% for now. We're going to drop a little bit, but we are still climbing. No, over 50 is no good. I mean, 1 in 126, that's not a lot. Make sure there's no handbrakes on or anything. No, so that's fine. So this is now just a test of me driving, <laughs> seeing if I can get us to T-Bay at all. We are allegedly only um, roughly f roughly 16 minutes away. Oh god, is it a climb all the way to T-Bay? I hadn't planned on that. Oh, is the stream switch sides? I didn't even notice. Yes, it did. There's a little bridge there. I thought that was over a road, not over the street. That's quite cute. Now the steam is with us. The stream is with us. The steam is most definitely not with us at the moment. Oh, that's lovely though. That's gorgeous. Just let me set up a shot. This could be an Ivo Peters film. Except Ivo had better control of the camera. But that's gorgeous. And with an actual driver at the helm, this locomotive would probably be touching the 60 mph mark. Not struggling at 31.5 mph like mine is. Thrim Thrimby Grange up main. So we're going through Thrimby Grange, whatever Thrimby Grange is. Could be anything. I don't know. Could be literally anything or anywhere. Could be a quarry, could just be a passing site. I don't know. But just look at the look at the detail. I know that this particular bit of country's not got a lot going on in it, but just the detail. It goes so far back as well, the depth you get in this route. Like some of the workshop routes, and this is not a bad way of doing it, it, it saves on file size, it saves on loading times, but you know, if you're down here, you can't see over the bank, so there wouldn't be anything past the bank other than the hills that needed to be. But here, they've got it just stretches back, and that's kind of what I'm going for with Sodor. Um, I like, I like, I want the thing that there is a whole thing around here. There's a world. It's not just um, the track and 20 foot either side of it. But like I said, that's not a criticism of the, of the Steam Workshop um, routes. They have a file size limitation. That they can't do things like developers like Steam Sound Supreme who have no file size limitation um, oh of course I'm climbing to Shap Summit aren't I of course bloody idiot absolute bloody idiot oh big complex big loading time as we were just discussing Yes, of course, I'm climbing up to Shap Summit. So this is where am I? What am I going past? I'm just going past Shap Harrison's, and then Shap Quarry, and then presumably, uh, yeah, Shap Summit has the quarry station. Shap Summit Quarry Platform. So that's where I'm aiming for. We're just coming past one of the complexes on the Shap. 
I hadn't even put two and two together. Because I've never driven, I've never owned the West Coast Mainline over Shap, so I didn't even think that, of course, the reason we're climbing all the time is because we're going over Shap Summit. Right, now I feel less bad about the fact that I'm only just getting 30 mph out of this express locomotive. Oh, here we go. That is one of the standards. It's a standard 460, so there you are. Be our standard 460 there. And it's, again, nice to drive that. It comes in black and green liveries. We are lined in both. And the idea here is to see if I can get up to Shiatsu, so which is quite a way away. I might stall and have to start again. Which is not what I want to happen. Then again, I might be able to hold it. I mean, I am pulling 10. <laughs> so, I would probably normally have a banker for this. Leander's going it alone at the moment. She might as well be, because I am a crap driver. <laughs> oh, no, hold on. It's levelled out a little bit. We can pick up a little bit of speed. It's gone to 1 in 142. Suddenly the speed is climbing from 29.1 to 29.4. Massive gains. Nine miles to T Bay, eleven minutes it's saying. Can we get there? Just gotta get up and over Shap Summit. Twenty nine point seven, it's gone up to one in one hundred and forty one. 9.8 It's getting flatter all the time I think I think we have broken the back of Shap Summit Or at least of the climb to Shap Is that Shap Summit Station? It is Shap Summit No it's not Shap Platform station at Shap Summit? I don't know. This is not an area of my railway history that is particularly um, well known to me. And that I have no clue. Right, cutting. Very nice. But again, full scenery around the cutting. You'll never see it unless you go into this camera view. But, I mean, look. There's a town. I can't see that. There's trees and a bank in the way. This is Shap Summit. <laughs> I made it. Up Shap Bank. With a 460 pulling 10. I'll take that for someone who claims to not be a good driver. I know, I know. Pipe down in the comments. I know it's not that impressive, really, but shush. For me, it's an achievement. I've never done it before. So there. Ninety miles an hour. You know what? I just might. So here we are going through Shap platform. Sight, is it? Oh, a bit of camera control, but <laughs> knackered my wrist up. So let's have a look at Shap Station, fairly standard. Nothing remarkable, just happens to be at the top of quite a nasty hill. We can turn the sandling off now, I think. 
Well, there's a slight climb after Shap Quarry, but that's fine. I can cope with a slight um, climb after Shap Quarry. Do I go through Shap Quarry platform? No, I don't. But yeah, Shap Summit Quarry. So there is a sh there is an actual summit and I haven't reached it yet. One in 106. Blimey, there we go. Boom. Got signal box. Shap Quarry. That's fine. There it is. That's where the quarry actually is. There's an awful lot of... If you're a route... If you're a scenario builder, this is a route to get. There's a lot of stuff you can do, particularly if you're, if you're an LMS um, fan and you, like your, and you like your scenario building. Definitely grab this route and make some scenarios for it using as much LMS stock as you can. I will be all over it. This is the final climb up to Shap, so I haven't made it over Shap yet. Why does it drop to 60 mph at Shap something? That's when it should be going up. Because then I could really let, the, let things loose, let the taps open. Let things, let the taps open. That's when I could really open the taps and let this thing go. But nope. Drop it down to 60. Thirty. Not too far away from Shap Summit. Oh no, just go back up to 90 and then it's downhill to T-Bay, presumably. So it's only six miles away from T-Bay. This route is genuinely gorgeous. I will probably do another um, thing of this, probably along from T-Bay to Grange Over Sands. In fact, that will be my next video. I'll do a run from T-Bay to Grange Over Sands. I'll do T-Bay to Arnside or something, because that's that gives you a decent look at the route, but it's also quite a long section, that. so maybe not my next video, but at some point I will do another section of this with a smaller locomotive where you get to see more of the route, but definitely, um, whether that will be part of the Steam Festival or not, I don't know, but definitely do check out this route, Steam Sound Supreme, the link is in the description below. Ah, so this is Shap Summit Quarry. And there is Shap Summit Quarry platform. And this is Shap Summit. So we've made it to the summit of Shap. Hello, Harry Potter clock. There it is. Shap Summit. 916 feet above sea level. Thank you for your comment, Nablina Girl. That would be on City Skylines number two at this point. Made it to Shap Summit. And now we're going to start going downhill, aren't we? Yes, there we go. We can shut off the regulator now. Give the fireman a rest. Five and a half miles to T-Bay. Oh, 175. I had the easy run up the, up the summit. For those of you that own the West Coast Mainline over Shap, the Dovetail Games, the Steam add-on, um, I've never driven it, so does this look like it? Uh, I know it'll look something similar. Is this better or worse than the, com than the other commercial, the mainstream commercial add-on? Debate in the comments below. But yeah, here we go, so we can shut all that off. Open up the cylinder cocks. There is no passenger view, because these carriages, these carriages don't come with a passenger view, apparently. But yeah, so we can just sit and relax now. Not a lot of work for me to do, I can turn the sanding off. There's almost no work for me to do. Until I get to T-Bay. This is oh, this is it's just it's just lovely. It's just 
lovely. <laughs> this route. And again, the detail, you feel like the countryside stretches for miles on either direction. Like, look from the footplate. You've got another fell up there. Feels like you are cutting through a valley, and then over this side you can see the forest. And it, look, it reminds me, I've driven, I've, well, I haven't personally driven, but I, me and my parents used to go on, on holidays up to Scotland, and we'd always stop at Tea Bay services, and this is the kind of scenery that I remember from those trips. It was gorgeous and still is gorgeous and this this route has capped it so massive massive thumbs up to Steam Sound Supreme they've done a wonderful job absolutely wonderful bang up stellar job um, but I now get to sit back and relax and just watch Leander coast <laughs> and build up steam pressure again 162 watts of boiler pressure 225 pounds per square inch Including that in the addition to the tractor, effort, 26,610 pounds of tractor effort. So, fairly powerful locomotives, particularly you know for 460s. Very powerful indeed. But, uh, but yeah, so we're now coming through Scout Green. Little hut. And railway crossing with car waiting. But, you know, I love the feeling of depth in this room. I really do. I think that's the thing that the scenery gives me. Feel you feel you feel like you're actually there for a start. That's how good the scenery, the scenery and the artwork is, and it is artwork. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, but this is just it's it's just so gorgeous, so gorgeous. I love everything about it. Um. Definitely a route I will play a lot of. You'll see many more of my train sim videos happening on this. Again, maybe not so much in the festival because I want the festival to be lots of um, specific routes. The only reason I did um, two uh, parts of the Great Northern, Great North of Scotland route is because it was short enough to do that. I'd have to do about four or five episodes of this, and I want to share as much as I can, as many different routes as I can. As I've just gone. This evening, before I started playing this, I've just gone on a massive um, workshop download spree of new routes, specifically for this um, this event. So I want to get as many of those out there as possible. But I can guarantee you, train some videos in the future, you will be seeing a lot of this route because it's just wonderfully done. It's wonderfully done. Anyway, I need to start breaking because I'm going 74, 75 miles an hour and on the approach to T-Bay. We're just over a mile away. There we go, that should arrest my speed quite nicely, especially now it's starting to level out. Oh, that is a fearsome bank, that. One in 75 all the way up to Shap Summit. Five miles of one in 75. That's a thing. Oh, excuse me. So it's gone midnight again. Three minutes past midnight. Yes, I, yes, YouTube, I know that I have a comment. I saw it live here. You saw it here first, folks. But yes, have no fear, you'll be seeing many more parts of this route. I just wanted to show you... Um, one section of it, the West Coast Main Line section. Um, I think the only other part of it really to show you is the the Furness Railway section. Might do a big excursion from Barnard's Castle at some point to Grange Over Sands or something, or Arnside. But yes, here we are entering T Bay Station. Uh, not far away in reality, there is the, T there is the big motorway. Uh, and T Bay Service Station. We often used to stop on our family holidays. But here we are. And the stations are gorgeous as well, it should be pointed out. All the stations are brilliant. And a lot of them are full models, so I'm going to have to cheat a little bit here because I've not done particularly well to slam a few handbrakes on on the coaching stock. <laughs> Drag us to a halt. 
There we go. Saved it. Saved it. Is that a 460? Yeah, it's a 460. Are there any other any of the other locomotive specimens? Do we have a 260 or a flying pig? Yeah, no, that's a 460. And that's a fowler coming to its own signal. But yeah, there we are, uh, and that's T-Bay Station, which you can just see just to the right of the message box. So yeah, uh, that is the um, part of the Stainmore Railway. Uh, definitely check it out. Link in the description down below to the Steam Sound Supreme website. There's also uh, links to other third-party developers. Um, obviously links to the game, the main game as well. So yeah, genuinely, it's a, it's a wonderful route, and I can't wait to drive some more of it for you. Probably not part of this festival, um, but certainly going, if you'll pardon the pun, further down the line, um, showing you some more of it. So thank you ever so much for watching. Um, check out the annotations you're about to see on the screen. Check out, obviously, the links in the description below. Sorry for smacking my microphone. And continue to check out, uh, so obviously check out my solo snippet series, and I'll see you uh, in the next episode of our Steam Festival for the summer. So thank you ever so much for watching. I was me. That was the Stainmore Branch on Trains in 2020. Stainmore Branch. Stainmore Railway on Trains in 2020. Thank you ever so much for watching. Goodbye. It's like when you build a model railway. You sort of, you know, you, you put the track down. You're like, well, I want, run, I want to run a train on it. Oh, but it doesn't look quite. It doesn't. It's not finished. And I want to run my trains, damn it. And so I shall. We're now, we're now heading to the titular station of Crabbenmore. It's the worst restaurant menu ever. <laughs> Crabbenmore! <laughs> <laughs> it's like that bloody Monty Python. Spam, 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 spam. spam. <laughs>